In this video, we'll start talking about how to solve one-step linear equations, or just called one-step equations. These are going to be the very, very, very easy end of the spectrum, uh, but hopefully a good foundation here will help us solve some of the more complicated questions we're about to run into. So when solving equations in general, not just linear equations, any equation in general, a very common approach is to use inverse operations. So at this stage, we're just going to talk about two two sets of them, or four operations that are inverses of each other. So uh, the example I'd like for us to think about is if we start with the number 5, what could we do to the number 5 to get to 8? Hopefully you're thinking you could add 3. Perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Now how would we undo that act? How would we change the 8 back to 5? Well, we would need to subtract 3 from it. So this hopefully gives us the understanding or notion that addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other. They undo one another. If you add 7, but then you subtract 7, you go back to where you started. Similarly, hopefully it's easy to intuit that multiplication and division will undo each other. If you multiply, say, 10 by 3, and you divide 30 by 3, you go back to 10. So we'll use these two basically relationships in order to solve the next four one-step equations. So for the very first one, we're asked to solve x plus 3 equals 7 for x. We notice that the operation between x and 3 is addition. So what would undo that act or what would be the opposite or inverse operation of addition? It would be subtraction. So to solve this equation, first we just write it down again. In order to solve this equation, we would need to perform the inverse operation on 3 to the other side. So if it's addition of 3 on the left-hand side, when I rewrite this problem, I'm going to move the 3 to the right, but when I do, I use the inverse operation. So the positive 3 or the addition of 3 becomes a subtraction by 3 when it moves over. And this, hopefully, we can simplify into x is equal to 4. At this stage, we might be inclined to just walk away from the problem. We're not finished. This is just a potential solution. In order to know whether this is actually the solution to the equation or not, we have to. This is non-negotiable. This is not a suggestion. It's a requirement. We must check our potential solutions in the original equation. So here, I'm going to check x is equal to 4 in the original equation. x plus 3 is equal to 7, and I'm going to replace x with 4 to get 4 plus 3 equals 7. Well, 4 plus 3 is 7, so that will result in 7 equals 7, which indeed is a true statement. we do agree that 7 equals 7. So what this means is x is equal to 4 is a solution to the equation. Now we can walk away from the problem because we solved the equation and then we verified that the potential solution was a solution to the equation. We can solve the next one similarly. First. We copy the question down, and we recognize that the operation between x and 3 this time is subtraction. So in order to move the x, I'm sorry, in order to move the 3 to the right-hand side, we would need to perform the inverse operation. The inverse of subtraction is addition. So when I take the 3 and I move it to the right side, I would need to add it to the 1. This would simplify to x is equal to 4. And as before, this is not a solution. We have no idea if indeed we did the problem correctly. We would have to check our answer. And again, we always go back to the original equation. So x minus 3 is equal to 1. We replace x with 4 because that's what we're checking. 4 minus 3 is 1. And we end up with a statement that says 1 equals 1. That, again, is a true statement.
So because we took our potential solution, plugged it into the original equation, and ended up with a true statement, we can say that x equals 4 is a solution to our equation. Multiplication and division work the same way, so I'll move a little bit faster here. So we write down our equation, 3p equals 15. The operation between 3 and p is multiplication. We would undo that by dividing the 3 over to the other side. So we would write this as p equals 15 over 3, which simplifies to p equals 5. And again, this is a potential solution. We don't know that this is a solution to the equation until we confirm it or until we check it. So we have to check p equals 5 in the original equation, 3p equals 15. So here we replace the p with 5. And 3 times 5 is indeed 15. So we get 15 equals 15, which is a, excuse me, it's a true statement. Therefore, p equals 5 is a solution to the equation. Lastly, we start by rewriting our equation, r over 2 equals 10. We're dividing r by 2, where the operation between r and 2 on the left-hand side is division. In order to get r by itself, we have to get rid of the 2 from there. In order to do that, we have to use the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication. So in order to move the 2 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, I have to multiply it on the right-hand side which would result in r equals 20. And as in the previous three examples, we solved an equation. We always get a potential solution. How do we know if it's a solution or not? We must check r is equal to 20 in the original equation, which is r over 2 equals 10. So we simplify to 20 over 2 equals 10. And 20 divided by 2 is 10 equals 10, which is indeed a true statement. So again, I'm not writing those things here. I'm leaving that for you to fill in the blanks and to write those statements yourself. But that's how we solve one-step equations.